So far, we have discussed what are complex valued functions and we discussed uh, different properties of these functions as well. Now, we also discussed uh, many examples of these complex valued functions as well. Now, to construct more interesting and more complex uh, complex valued functions, we are going to need the of sequence and series. Now, in this discussion, we are going to focus on sequences and the series part is going to be a part of our future discussions. Now, what is a sequence? A sequence is any collection of objects, events or numbers that has some pattern that we can find. Okay, so apparently, sometimes it is difficult uh, to find the pattern. But if we can find the pattern, then we say that it's a sequence of uh, numbers, objects, or events, or anything. Okay, so for example, in this example, 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. So uh, they appear to be very random uh, integers. But in fact, they are related to uh, these diagrams. So in fact, uh, this is the number of dots. In, in this triangle, 6 is the number of dots in this triangle, 10 is the number of dots in this triangle, etc., etc. And similarly, there are many other examples as well. So one such example is, is this seashell. Okay, so apparently there is no pattern uh, in this seashell, but if we follow this uh, path, if we follow this curve, then we can find the pattern in this path. Okay, so how to find pattern in this path okay so if we confined uh, this curve in squares okay so in such a way that this curve passes uh, through the outer corners of each square okay so this is one square okay and this is another square there is another square and this is a kind of uh, squares and going inside and inside and similarly on the other way this is another square okay and the curve is passing through the outer corners of the square as well and then we have another square so we have the following pattern okay so assume that this side is uh, one uh, then this side is also one so this side is two then because uh, one plus one is two over here and similarly two plus one is three so the side of this third square is three and similarly this side is two and this side is three so so each side of this square is five and the each side of this square is 8 and up to so on okay now these numbers 1 1 2 3 5 8 and up to so on so they form a kind of sequence okay so this is also known as fibonacci sequence but uh, the important thing is uh, we have found a pattern in this very uh, random uh, picture okay so uh, this is uh, the sequence 1 1 2 3 5 8 13 and up to so on okay so as i told you earlier this is a fibonacci sequence and uh, how to find uh, the next number so to find the next number is to add the previous two numbers okay so for example uh, the next number is going to be 21 and up to so on okay so uh, the next number is going to be 21 plus 13 okay now uh, let's consider another example of course if we write down these integers positive integers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 up to so on and since there is a pattern so what is the pattern each time we are writing down the next positive integer okay so the next consecutive positive integer so 7 plus 1 8 8 plus 1 9 up to so on so we can uh, so we can see the pattern so there it is a sequence okay and similarly we can write down other examples so for example 1 3 5 7 and so far we can easily see that what is the pattern we are writing down uh, the odd integers odd positive integers and the next is going to be 9 and the next is going to be 11 and the next is going to be 13 now if we uh, want to write down a formula for this uh, pattern then it is very simple to write down so for example we can say that uh, when we uh, give the input to be 1 then I should get 1 when we take the input to be 2 the output should be 3 when we take the input to be 3 the output should be 5 and up to so on so can we find a function because this will help us uh, to uh, predict for example the hundreds term and even uh, the thousandth term etc etc okay so so the idea is very simple we can write down f of n to be 2n minus 1 
okay now this uh, function this formula basically predicts the terms of this sequence so for example if I want to see what is the first term so over here just take n is equal to 1 okay so uh, it is going to give me 2 into 1 minus 1 this is equal to 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 similarly if I take let's say randomly n is equal to 3 so it should give me 5 in this case so f of 3 is going to be equal to 2 into 3 minus 1 and 6 minus 1 is 5 and up to so on so uh, this uh, kind of formula helps us in predicting the terms and writing down the terms and eventually of course discussing the behavior of the uh, sequence as well and similarly if we have another uh, sequence let's say 2 4 6 8 so far we can see that we are writing down the positive uh, uh, even integers okay so 10 12 and 14 up to so on and next the question is can we write down a function which will give me the first term to be 2 the second term to be 4 the third term to be 6 the fourth term to be 8 and up to so on and of course in this case it is very simple to write down f of n to be equal to 2n and uh, once again let's say randomly uh, okay so n is equal to 1 f of 1 is 2 into 1 which is equal to 2 so it is giving me the first term and very randomly let's say n is equal to 7 f of 7 is going to be equal to 2 into 7 is equal to 14 and if I want to calculate what is the hundredth term then we can also calculate what is the hundredth term so this is 200 so uh, we can say that a function uh, a sequence is a function whose domain is the positive integers because uh, uh, when we put n is equal to 1 then it is going to give me the first term when we put n is equal to 2 it is going to be give me the second term up to so on so a sequence is a function that takes positive integers as input and what is going to be the output now the output as we discussed that it could be anything it could be uh, output of events it could be uh, numbers it could be objects it could be anything now uh, over here we are uh, focusing on the, the complex numbers so that's why we impose the condition that the range is going to be uh, complex numbers so that's how we define a sequence of complex numbers so what is a sequence of complex numbers uh, it is a function from positive integers okay so let's say z positive to complex numbers so that's how we define a sequence or sometimes we can also write them down as natural numbers to c okay so that's how we define a sequence now uh, let's see some uh, different examples uh, of uh, complex valued uh, sequences okay so consider this example f1 of n okay so very simple example n plus iota 2n okay so it's a function and uh, this if the domain belongs to the uh, natural numbers then it is a sequence and the output are complex numbers okay so what is going to be the first term so the first term is going to be f of 1 is equal to uh, 1 plus iota 2n so it is going to be 1 plus 2 iota so this is the first term and similarly we can calculate what is for example the hundredth term so if n is equal to 100 what will happen f1 of 100 is going to be equal to 100 plus iota 200 etc etc okay now let's consider a second example so f2 of n okay so let's say this is going to be equal to 2 minus 1 over n plus 5 iota 5 minus 1 over n so once again it's a function the domain is going to be natural numbers and uh, the output are complex numbers so it is a sequence of complex numbers and uh, the third example uh, let's say we consider a function 2 plus out of 5 raised to power n now over here once again it's a function of uh, natural numbers and the outputs are complex numbers so it is a sequence of complex numbers okay so uh, for convenience we simply call complex sequences as sequences because in complex analysis we are only concerned with the sequence of complex numbers so whenever we say a sequence it means a sequence of complex numbers now how do we denote a sequence of complex number so we denote it as uh, zn n is equal to 1 to infinity so n is equal to 1 to infinity tells us what is going to be the value what is going to be the initial value of n it is 1 and what is going to be the final value it is infinity of course infinity is not a real number but it will uh, goes it goes to infinity 
okay so and uh, each time uh, we have an increment of one so for example uh, the terms are going to be z1 z2 z3 up to zn and up to so on or we can just write down uh, one to infinity because it is uh, understood that uh, this uh, n is going to be uh, the variable of this function okay and simply Sometimes we just write down Zn and uh, instead of uh, uh, stating its uh, domain 1 to infinity, we just write it down Zn. Okay? Of course, uh, when it is understood that, what are the indices? Okay? And the terms of the sequence are Z1, Z2, Z3, up to so on. And roughly speaking, uh, we call these terms as the sequence as well. Okay? So, Sometimes we start a sequence from other integers. Okay, so for example, Zn where n starts from minus 1 to infinity or Zn where n starts from 0 to infinity. So it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that we are changing the definition of the sequence. So the domain is uh, natural numbers. So uh, the next example is going to help us in understanding this difference. So this is a function. Okay, so let's call it f of n. So n varies from 1 to infinity. So it varies uh, on the set of integers. So, it is a uh, sequence, uh, of course, it's a function whose domain is set of natural numbers. Now, we can also write down the same f of n in the following way. Okay, so 2 minus uh, 1 over n plus 2 plus iota 5 plus 1 over n plus 2. Now, in this case, uh, we have changed uh, n to n plus 2. Now, uh, when n is equal to 1, so we are getting over here. Now, the starting point is changed. Okay, so instead of uh, uh, n is equal to 1 now, we are going to start from n is equal to minus 1. And over here, we can easily see that when we put n is equal to minus 1 over here, then it is uh, going to give me n is equal to 1. Okay, so uh, the terms of the sequence are going to be the same, but we have just changed the indices of this sequence. And similarly, uh, we can uh, change or we can vary uh, uh, this n to be n plus m where m is any other integer etc etc so that's what it means by when we change the indices okay so it doesn't mean that we are changing the definition of the sequence we are just changing these indices so in this part we have discussed and defined what is a sequence of a complex numbers now in the next discussion we are going to see what is limit of a sequence of complex numbers and uh, using these sequences we will define what are what is a series and of course eventually we will see how to construct uh, new complex valued functions using the concept of series.